What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here in this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, guys, I want to talk about some potential upcoming SPS utility that nobody's really thinking about, or at least I hadn't really thought about it until this moment and then started digging into the numbers. And that is the bridging of SPS into other chains, right? Uh, Clay's talked about this. He's talked about it especially in the SPS audit, but we've we've heard the team mention this several times in the past. And while there hasn't been any clear direction on what would be included, my guess, and again, this is just my guess, would you know we'd probably see some kind of bridge to Solana. We'd see something to maybe the the ETH layer twos. I think Base is a good option. Maybe Polygon, Avalanche, right? Again, I, I don't know how far down the the spectrum we go in terms of you know uh, L ones, but my whole point is that the team and the DAO, right, wants to move in that direction, which means if we were to offer LP rewards similar to what we have here for BNB chain, the Ethereum chain, Ethereum mainnet, and of course, Hive, that could make things interesting. Now, again, none of this financial advice, I have no idea where it's going, but it does lead us hopefully into a place where SPS will have additional utility and we will lock up more SPS in these other pools as we add that liquidity, right? So again, it all depends on how much we choose to delegate out for rewards. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I, I think it's going to be something or at least hopefully somewhat competitive to what we have with some of the main chains here. So you can see there's actually a decent disparity between ETH SPS versus BNB. I don't know why BNB has so you know so little. It's only 135,000 versus 350 at uh, Ethereum and Hive individually each, right? But let's let's just go on the complete low end here, and I just want to give you a little bit of of context, right? If we were to match the amount of liquidity that's being provided on the BNB chain on say Solana, right? You get $135,000 worth of liquidity, half of it's going to be sold, half of it is going to be SPS. So you take that half of it, looking at the price of SPS, and I, I actually calculated with SPS at 0.7 cents versus 0.6, which is much closer to now, and that would actually lock up 10 million SPS, right? It, it would require 10 million SPS for us to be at that liquidity, at that, you know, at that liquidity amount. So I actually think that they're, you know, depending on how many chains we do and depending on what the depth of liquidity based on, you know, the rewards end up being, that could be significant. I mean, we, we're talking about at least, again, if we're using BNB as, as the model chain here, we're talking about at least 10 million SPS getting locked up in each of these chains, right? Would inflation increase? Yes, obviously, because we pull, be pulling in uh, more of what has been set aside for LP rewards, but that's, that's besides the point. We already have a lot of inflation. My whole point is that we would be getting at least 10 million for Solana, maybe another 10 million for base, maybe another 10 million for, for Polygon. And that is if we only go with what we have at BNB. I mean, you triple each of those to be more competitive, double or triple them to be competitive with Ethereum or Hive. And I mean, now we're talking about close to 90 million SPS if you do it across three chains, right? Uh, and again, I'm using Solana, Matic, and maybe Base, right? Or Arbitrum, Optimism, whichever one uh, people feel is ha has the most uh, potential. But either way, I, to me, I think that there is a lot of potential there. I'm not saying that it's going to happen, and I don't even know what the time frame for something like this would be. My hope is that we see it in the next six months, right? Meaning this year, 2024. But again, that is a complete guess. I have no idea. I just know that the team wants to focus on that once they are done with the new player experience, which we're hoping will be done by the end of Q3, right? So hopefully uh, end of September, early October. But just want to share some of those rough numbers with you. Again, it could be, you know, tens of millions all the way up to 100 million, depending on how many chains we choose to, to move out to. Again, I don't know what the incentives will be. I don't know what the, the rewards might be. Maybe there might be some partnerships with some of these chains to bridge out to them. I, I don't know, right? There could be a lot of really cool things that end up happening, uh, but we have to wait and see what that brings in. But even at the lower level, even just locking up 10, 20, 30 million SPS, in my opinion, is going to be worthwhile because not only are we locking up that SPS in an LP, but we are creating an opportunity for people on these other chains when they hear about Splinterlands 
they can have access to it, whether they're on base, whether they're on the Solana or Matic. Um, they don't have to find ways to bridge all the way out, right? They can they can just swap in, get exposure to SPS, and then figure things out from there, especially if we have onboarding through something like TerraBlock, where they can go directly from the uh, Solana chain or the Matic chain into the Splinterlands game. But that is all I have for you guys in this video. Just wanted to share with you some quick thoughts on that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know if there are chains that I didn't mention today that you think would be worth exploring for the team. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.